Hi, this is Don from Don Drones On, and welcome to Module 6 of the Droner's Guide to the 2019 Canadian RPAS Regulations. In this module, we'll go through the regulations associated with where you can fly. And this is a classic case where the regulations are scattered all over the place. There's some in the 12, 13, 14, and there's a 47, and some 25s, and a 41. I've tried to sort them out, bring them into a logical order, and present them all in one module. Now, before we get into the module, I want to remind you that the entire presentation package from the Droner's Guide to the 2019 RPAS regulations is available for a nominal fee. Just check out the link in the description below. If you choose to purchase this PDF document, you'll get a, the complete package from all the training modules in one document, over 100 pages of detailed explanation of every one of the 901 regulations, just like in these videos, with a clear expo explanation for each rule. And of course, the active links in the documents will help you to easily access the additional resources like the specific regulations and standards and other resources available to you. And as a bonus, I will throw in a free starter droning logbook with your purchase of the Droner's Guide material. This Droner's Logbook is an Excel spreadsheet with multiple tabs. Each tab has a component of the required regulations covered off, whether it be your registration information, flight logs, maintenance logs, pre-flight checklists, other procedures, links to your manufacturers, all sorts of things like that. Each of the tabs is easily customizable so that you can tune it to your own operation, to your own drones, to the kinds of things that you do. And you can add in things that you think are important in your pre-flight checklist. You could do this all on your own if you wish to start from scratch, but why do your own? Start from mine. Let's get into the module. The first one is 901.12 do not fly near emergency operations. So unless you're actually part of the operation or are saving a human life, do not fly over or within a security perimeter established in response to an emergency. This includes things like police operations, firefighting, rescue operations, natural disasters. Many of these are very tempting operations to drone, to film, don't do it unless you're actually part of the operation. Stay out of the way of these brave men and women who are trying to save lives. 901.13 is a simple one. Let's get this one out of the way fast. You must not fly outside of Canadian airspace. 901.14, do not fly in controlled or restricted airspace. This starts to get tricky. So operations in controlled airspace must be carefully controlled. First of all, any of that stuff is an advanced operation, so you need your advanced operation pilot certification, at least. You also need authorization to fly in any controlled airspace. And there's a rule 90171 that covers that. Class F airspace is for military operations primarily, um, but Class F airspace is restricted and requires authorization from very specific organization or organizations, excuse me. Class F does include areas around military facilities, Parliament Hill, penitentiaries, and other sensitive locations. The designated airspace handbook defines all Canadian airspace locations precisely. The next rule is 90147. This is operations at or in the vicinity of an aerodrome, airport, or heliport. This is an advanced operation you need approval from air traffic control or the organization that is operating air traffic at that aerodrome uh, in order to fly near it, near the airport or heliport. Three nautical miles from an airport, one nautical mile from a heliport. When you're near an aerodrome, you must not interfere with other aircraft. Sounds sensible and sounds somewhat repetitive over other rules, but there you go. And in particular, you need an SFOC, a Special Flight Operations Certificate, to fly within three nautical miles of a military aerodrome. Next one, 90115. So this one basically says you contact authorities if an accidental entry into a controlled or restricted airspace occurs. So if your aircraft is out of control, so you've, you're in a flyaway situation, and flies into controlled airspace or class F airspace, 
immediately contact the correct authority as specified in the designated airspace handbook. Maximum altitude. Now this, this becomes an important issue, definitely. So the maximum altitude is defined under rule 901.25. This is a critical regulation that's, that's in the Canadian aviation regulations. And it is worded, in my humble opinion, very poorly. I've simplified it, I've verified it with Transport Canada, and here's what it really says. The maximum altitude you can fly is the greater of 122 meters or 30 meters above buildings or structures when within 61 meters horizontally. All right, and this diagram helps you with that, with understanding what that really means, is if you've got a, a small building, say 15, 20 meters high, you can still fly for, uh, 122 meters above it. That's your standard maximum altitude. But if you encounter a structure or building that's exceptionally tall, you can always go 30 meters above it. All right, so in this case, if you have a, 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 a tower that is uh, say, say 400 feet or 122 meters itself, you can go an additional 30 meters above that to a total of 152 meters. Okay, it's the, it's the greater of those two, 400 feet or 100 feet above the tower. Proximity to people is 90126. A very important rule again, and uh, they manage to make the rule as complicated as possible. This rule actually refers to the Advanced Operations Manufacturer's Declaration Rule, which is 901.69, which in turn refers to Standard 922 for RPA safety. So when you untangle all of this, you end up with this simple table on the following page. So here's Don's summary of the rules related to proximity to people. There's four cases to consider. If you have your basic pilot certificate, it's this column, if you have your advanced pilot certificate, it depends upon the drone that you are flying. If it's approved for uh, operations in controlled airspace, use this column. If your drone is approved for operations near people, use this column. And if you are flying a drone for that has been approved for operations over people, use this column. So the bottom line is, if you are, have your basic pilot certificate, which I would say the majority of people will have, the applicable regulation is 90126 that we just read. The proximity to the pilot, crew member, or any other person involved in the operation, and that's a that's a tricky phrase, by the way, but another person involved in the operation would be someone like a friend or family member or a client if it was a commercial operation that knows that you are flying the drone, is aware of the, the risks, and you're taking appropriate precautions to ensure that they do understand that and stand clear of landings and takeoffs and so forth. But they are considered part of this grouping here. And people, uh, the pilot, crew members, or other people involved in the operation, you have no limitation from a regulatory perspective, at least, in terms of how close you, you can get. Bystanders are where it becomes uh, important. So if you have your basic pilot certificate, you can get no closer than 30 meters to bystanders. If you're flying a drone, if you have your advanced pilot certificate and are flying a drone that is only approved for operations in controlled airspace and not under these other classifications, you still have to stay 30 meters away. If you're flying a drone that's been approved for operation near people, and you have your advanced pilot certificate, you can fly up to five meters away from them, so much closer. And if you have your advanced pilot certificate and are lucky enough to be flying a drone approved for operations over people, then you can fly right over them. All right, take a moment to study that chart. These are the appropriate um, regulations in case you wanna look at it in more detail. Um, 90169 has three parts to it, uh, or sub subparts, subsection A, B, and C, and they correspond to the 922 regulation for the technical specs of the drones of 04, 05, 
and 06. Last but not least, advertised events. This is covered under Rule 901.41. Bottom line is you need an SFOC, Special Flight Operation Certificate, to fly at any special aviation event or at any advertised event. An advertised event is any outdoor event that is advertised to the general public. And that could be in the newspaper, a notice on a notice board or on Facebook or anything like that. And some examples of outdoor events would be an outdoor music concert, a festival, uh, perhaps a, a, a market, farmer's market, craft market, anything like that, or a simple sporting event. If you are intending to fly at such an event, please apply for an SFOC via the Transport Canada website and there's the link for it right there. All right, and don't forget that you have to apply six weeks in advance. All right, that covers all of the regulations in the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations associated with where you can fly. And I would suggest that you move on to special cases in the regulations, which is in module seven. And again, a reminder that the presentation material that I have shown in this module, as well as the other seven modules in this training series, are available for a nominal fee via the link in the description below. And when you purchase that, you get your free Canadian drone pilot logbook in an Excel format that will allow you to meet other regulations in the, in the new regulations. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. I would appreciate any comments that you may have, suggestions, criticism, or applause. All of these are good. Please put them in the comment section below the video. Thank you once again.